Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. Get Pivot Data. You've probably heard of it. You might even have accidentally used it. But what is it? In this video, I'm going to demystify Get Pivot Data. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. So here I have a pivot table showing revenue per state for excellent ice creams. Total overall revenue, total revenue for California and total revenue for New York are three metrics in the organization. I want to pull those values out of the pivot table and display them elsewhere in the worksheet. The simplest way is to enter formulas into these three cells here. In E7, I will put equals B22 B22 being the cell with the grand total in. And in E8, I'll put equals B5, B5 being the revenue for California. And in E9, I'll put equals B17. Now, I deliberately typed the cell references B22, B5 and B17, but what if I'd used the point and click method? So if I delete those formulas, go up to E7, and type equals, but click on B22. Now I get something totally different. Excel generates the get pivot data function. Why does it do that? Is this what I want? And what is the get pivot data function? Stay tuned and I'll answer all those questions. I've put the original formulas back. Let's say I only want to see the revenue for chocolate ice cream. So I'll click on chocolate on the slicer and it applies the filter and everything works OK. Let's clear the filter. But I now want to sort the pivot table by revenue. So I'll click anywhere in column B, right click and select sort largest to smallest. The total revenue is fine, but the California revenue and the New York revenue are not correct. The problem is that the formulas reference a specific cell. The formula in E8 references B5. But when I sorted the pivot table by revenue, B5 no longer contains the total revenue for California. And this is where the get pivot data function can help. The get pivot data function doesn't reference a cell, it references based on values. So instead of saying, give me the total of cell B5, it says, give me the total revenue for California. Doing it this way, it doesn't matter which cell the total revenue for California is in. Now you can type the get pivot data function into a cell manually, just like you can with any other function, such as sum or XLOOKUP. It's just a function. But as you've seen, there's a quick way to do it. The key to being able to get the get pivot data function when you click on a cell is to make sure that generate get pivot data is enabled and it is by default. So unless it's been switched off, you won't need to do anything. If I click in the pivot table and click on pivot table analyze, just to the right of options on the left hand side of the ribbon is a drop down arrow. Click the drop down arrow and we have generate get pivot data and it has a tick against it. So I don't actually need to do anything. I'll just click away from the ribbon. Now click on E7, type equals and click on B22. And it generates the get pivot data function. It's got two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the field from the underlying data set. If I come out of this by pressing escape and click in the pivot table, you can see on the right hand side, the field is called total revenue. So let's go back and do it again equals B22. The second parameter is the start cell of the pivot table. This can actually be any cell in the pivot table. If you were to type the formula in manually, you can use any cell from the pivot table. But when you use the click on a cell method, Excel uses the first cell of the pivot table. Then I'll repeat the process for California. So equals and then click on, in this case, B13. And now we've got an extra couple of parameters. It's saying get the data from the pivot table 
I want the total revenue from the pivot table that starts in A2, where state equals California. And for New York, I'll type equals and click on B16. And it's the same formula, except it's got state equals New York. So I'll now sort that pivot table again. I'll sort it back into alphabetical order. Right click on any of the cells in column A, select sort A to Z. It sorted the pivot table. The total for California and the total for New York are in different cells, but the numbers in column E are correct. So what is there not to like about get pivot data? Its biggest problem is when you copy it. Here, I want the revenue for each year. So I'll click on G2 and then type equals and click on C10. And the reason I'm clicking on C10 is because that is the total revenue for 2020. And because generate get pivot data is enabled, it's generated the get pivot data function for me. If I then close up the 2020 details by clicking on the little minus sign in A2, it's still giving me the correct value. I'm then going to copy the formula down. So from G2, I'll copy the formula down to G3 and G4. The problem we've got is that when I entered the original formula, it hard coded the 2020. And that's what it's copied down. So all three cells contain exactly the same formula. So what I'll do is I will edit the first formula and instead of referencing 2020, I'll reference F2. And then when I copy the formula down, it changes the F2 to F3 and F4. Now, what happens when you type an equal sign and then click on a cell inside a pivot table, but there's no tick against generate get pivot data? Let me show you. So I'll click into the pivot table, go to analyze, click the arrow next to options and click on generate get pivot data. And what that has done is that has taken the tick away. I'll now go back to G2, type equals and click on C10 and it references the actual cell. Now, I prefer to have generate get pivot data turned on, and it is by default, because wanting to reference a specific cell from a pivot table is, in my opinion, the exception, not the rule. But your mileage may vary. If the opposite is true for you, you can just change the default as I've shown you. Now, changing that default setting is changing it for Excel on your computer. It's not changing it on a workbook by workbook basis. So if you found this video useful, please give it a like and make sure that you subscribe for more videos. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. I have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips and tricks to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up for that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.